Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up to 29. Nasdaq's down 11. S&Ps are down 5.5. Let's go to our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstad, as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at forex-trading-unlocked.com. That's forex-trading-unlocked.com. Teddy Kegstad, what's going on, brother? Hey, it's an FOMC day today. That's what's going on. I'm telling you, you are only on on the best days, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? It's so true. I mean, it's like, you know, it just seems that on these Wednesdays, that's when, you know, I mean, we're looking for movement in currencies. Uh, and and right. you know, there's no doubt that dollar is hanging up there, right? Yeah, and as the market turns, right, I think everyone's got to look at the dollar index right now. Yes, yes. So, so what do you think? Well, here's what I think. I think that uh, until the Fed meeting is done today at 115, I think it's going to be kind of a quiet trade. At least that's what I think. But you know what's kind of crazy is the major currency crosses, they're not paying attention to that. They must be oblivious to a Fed meeting. Really? So um, the dollar index pressed higher again today, and it's come off its highs. And uh, your majors, like the pound dollar, that set a low yesterday. It's okay. very strong this morning going into, like, once our markets opened up. And that's a rarity. Usually when you get a currency move like this, it starts before our markets open. They were actually kind of quiet until we started opening up around here. I see. So I think that um, we're going to see possibly a turn in the dollar right now, a short-term sell-off, because everything's factored in. I mean, honestly, unless um, the FOMC meeting today, they come out and actually cut rates, which uh, today is not the day they're going to do it. That would be a shocker. You know, that would obviously shake up the markets. Um, yeah. And I don't think they're going to change their tone either, guys. I think you guys know that right now we're pricing in at least a quarter point before the end of the year. I think it's like somewhere between 65 and 85 percent, depending on who's rating it. Um, and even a two cuts before the end of the year. Uh, I know. Yeah, it's and, almost a 50-50. So, in my opinion, I don't know about you guys. I think that either they're aware of some things that we're not aware of. It seems almost preemptive. I don't know why they want to cut rates even remotely. I think they should save their bullets. Um, and then you had the ECB also that came out where we know that, um, we've talked about this before, how they're gonna be um, remaining neutral for the next year. But they came out with some stuff this week that they're gonna actually probably bring back some quantitative easing kind of stuff. So synthetically, they are going to start to cut rates over in the, in the Eurozone. Yes. So these are things I think people need to pay attention after today. Um, but I think there's going to be a short-term turn. I think that the, the high is in in the dollar index for the day and maybe the next few sessions. And you're probably going to see the pound dollar, if, as long as the dollar index doesn't rally, if it breaks, you're going to probably see follow-through in the pound dollar to the upside. The Euro US dollar will probably um, go to the upside. Um, and then you have the U.S. dollar Swiss, which is already the leader. That's they're banging their lows right now. They're actually off right now. I was looking at the chart before we came on, and they were lower earlier. And I was looking at, oh my gosh, these guys are hammering it already. You know. So, yeah. So you know, and it was so intriguing here, Teddy, is that you know when Draghi came out yesterday, I mean, he moved the markets right across the world, and well, it, you know, the equity markets for sure. Um, well, he moved the he moved the pound and the dollar. Sure. I mean. Uh, you know, the euro also, right? I mean, so this is Except intriguing. Except the yen. The, he didn't, yeah, the yen, the yen <laughs> just laying there, huh? That chart, I'm telling you, like, I, I, was, I was looking at it and talking to some people this morning. They asked me about the yen, and I'm like, all I know is if you've been trading the yen for the past two weeks, whether you're long or short, you had to have gotten chewed up. I, I can't yes. see how Right, because it's still what, he, what Teddy's saying, folks. It's still laying at the exact same number. And what's intriguing about that yen, you know, when you take a look at it, is that what you're going to see in the yen, folks, is that there's a spike low. And I remember that day. That's a real. That's a real trade. Um, that was that was a vicious little deal that happened. Uh, what's that? The January third. Yes. Yeah. January third. That thing spiked down to 104.87. And then closed right. at 107. I mean, that was like an insane wipeout somewhere, you know. Right. It was kind of reminiscent of when the pound debacle back 20 years ago. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was 10 years ago? 20. 20 years ago. I said, yeah, 20. 20 years ago. Oh, I think so. I think that was late 90s, yeah. Oh, my God. Do you remember when Soros made a billion and I, a half dollars? Yeah, I, I remember it. That's what's sad. so sad. <laughs> You didn't even believe it was 10 years ago. I was surprised it was 20. I know. <laughs> I'm fine, right? Oh, no. I'm telling you, man. So, but, yeah, I think that uh, your listeners who trade the currency markets, or uh, they should really watch that dollar index. 
Um, now, if they today's trade, you guys know how it is with FOMC. We can see all kinds of head fakes going around. Yes. So after today, tomorrow, I would check the dollar index and see what it's doing. If it's making newer highs, well, then that dollar bull is here, and it's definitely not going anywhere. Going, it's probably going to trend into the G20 meeting. Okay. And that would also mean that the, the markets that we talked about now, like the pound dollar, the euro um, versus the dollar. They're in rally mode right now. They would collapse and make newer move lows for okay. sure. If the dollar index. Boy, it's going to be a lot of moves, huh? Yeah, big. And big. this is, I mean, you know, the real, the real question is going to be going forward too. Are we going to actually get in a currency war, right? You know, because yeah. Oh, you know, I think we're already in one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, I think the news is a little bit lagging that issue, and they've been kind of like, I mean. Economic warfare goes on no matter what, all every year in and out, no matter what the situations are. Right. You know, I mean, usually it's waged by central banks, and right now we have a, a time where central banks are actually being neutral; they're off the table. This is all done between the leadership of different countries because of the tariff wars, and then we even have the whole Brexit EU thing. You know, so it started with that; that's been lingering, and now it's escalated with the U.S. and China. Yeah. Man, it's a lot of moving parts. This is going to be wild yes. watching this. You know, it's wild. I mean, I, I remember, you know, there's always days that you're, you're saying, okay, which way is this going to go? But it seems like this one is a larger one because of the context that if we do have a turn that to say, okay, you know, we've been going up, as Kevin Hinks said, four, nine, nine times. So what's that? We've been going up for like three years maybe, right? And if, right. if they're going to really say that okay we're going down then it's like okay now what's going to be the game book there sure. you know and i guess the one nice thing though is there's a good harmonic play going on with the dollar index because the it? euro and the pound which are the two biggest components seem to be trading you know in tandem with the moves they're you know obviously against the trend so when the okay. dollar is smelling, they're breaking and conversely you know so i think for those traders that are out there trading the euro and the pound especially you can key off the dollar index. Um, your broader base currencies, to some degree, I think, yes, you're like your uh, New Zealand dollar and Aussie dollar in Canada, for sure. Um, the Japanese yen, though, all I can tell you is if the dollar, in, if the dollar gets a rally, okay, yeah. uh, in the index, I think that you might raise the range of the Japanese U.S. dollar yen trade a bit, you know. Okay. Um, but even if there's an extended rally, I don't see that, that the yen is going to follow that trend. Interesting. You know, I think that's the one that's kind of landlocked towards range trading bias. So, um, I mean, I trade the yen dollar trade every once in a while. Um, right now, I'll tell you what, with the way it looks, I'm not going to look at this thing for a very long time until it actually sets a trend and gives me a reason to either. Well, it's so it. intriguing what you're saying because, like, gold is still high. And what I've seen is that every time that the yen gets strong at all, gold stays up. And maybe the yen's keeping gold up because it's like, Normally, when the yep. dollar is this high, gold should be smoked, man, and it, it, right. it's refusing to back off, man. You know? Yeah, yeah. Right. There's an arm somewhere there coming up. Right? Yeah, there's no doubt. Listen, folks, every trading day, you can check them out at trading forex dash forex dash trading dash unlock dot com. Teddy, have a great Thanks, one. Guys. Safe one. Look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks, Teddy. Go White Sox. We got the crosstown.